Hey, sugar bear. Oh, no! Welcome to Never Solved, an investigative podcast that digs deep into the bowels of crime to get to the bare bones of murder. I'm your host, Todd Barnett, and with me in the studio today is James Poorly. Hello. You can subscribe to our podcast for weekly updates on all types of murder. Today's case has got me fired up. I've got to say, in all three of the cases we have looked into so far, this one has got to be my top two. Indeed, James. This episode sent a tingle straight from the tip of my toes, up, and then back down into my soft center. Today's case is one of mass poisoning, family drama, competing businesses, and shady private detectives. A case we like to call Cream Pie Custody. This case is made all the more tragic because those involved aren't bad people. They just got caught up in something so malicious, so horrible, that their lives would never be the same again. But don't be fooled, listeners. These people did nothing to deserve their fate. And really, it could have happened to you, or me, or any one of us. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was last week, wasn't it? Yeah, but I mean, that's still longer than yesterday, right? I guess. You have a point. This is Hubert Seller, the man currently in custody for his kid and for his life. Hugh has been accused of poisoning over 30 people with anthrax from his food truck in downtown Oregon. He spoke to me from his holding cell in prison. I didn't poison anyone. Now you can say my food ain't great. Lord knows enough people have but never has it caused more than a mild stomach upset. And that's only if you get the triple cream bacon Monday pie. Those things are deadly. A Monday? A new invention of mine. I thought I'd start a new week. Fair enough. The police were saying you were trying to poison your wife? Seems like she's the only one that didn't get sick. The bitch. Excuse me. There goes my temper again. Look. Me and Sue... We got our differences, what with our ongoing custody battle over our son. But to say I would go as far as to poison the mother of my child? You did abuse her though, correct? I smacked her around a bit every now and then, when she was being a dumb slut. But poison? No way, man. That's sick. As clearly violent as Hubert is, I have to admit, he does have a point. Just because he beat his wife doesn't mean he poisoned over 30 people, 12 of which died. I had to talk to his lawyer to get a better picture of things. I've known Hubert for going on 20 years now. He's not the brightest egg in the basket, but he's no villain. Not really. This is Jill Person, Hubert's lawyer. She's representing him in his custody battle and the poison case. Can you tell me what exactly he's facing? If he is found guilty? Well, on the poison case, he's facing life. And obviously that won't impact well on the custody hearing. While I was at the prison, Todd was out doing some canvassing, speaking to the locals and the survivors of the poisoning. I first just felt like a bird in the mass Sally Smooth was one of the last people to be poisoned. She didn't eat the whole cream pie, and that's why doctors say she survived. Your throat swole up too, is that right? Like, 
That's awful. And could you describe what happened then? Yes. But I'd rather not. It's quite awful to talk. What Sally could be bothered to tell me was disturbing and not dissimilar from what I'd heard from the other survivors. Sadly, on that day, twelve people died on the spot. A man on the scene, Clay Day, vividly describes the scene. It was like fucking Jonestown, man. They drank that fucking Kool-Aid, bro. They were all lying about the place, Steph, like matchsticks. And every single one was in the process of, or already had, shat themselves. As if that wasn't horror enough. Just when the police thought they had the suspect in custody, and the case wrapped up, another poisoning from another food truck. The bodies were piling up, and with a total of 25 people dead or dying, and 25 semi or fully disabled, the police had no choice but to bring in the second mobile food vendor. They call me Bob the Cop. I have never harmed no man. I make corn. In the same prison as Hubert now resides Billy Bob Cop. The two men have been in competition for a decade, but have become close friends in prison. Think about it. We've been fussing and feuding for ten years, and it took this to bring us together. I mean, why now would I poison his truck, and how could he have poisoned mine? We just fought it out the good old-fashioned way. Corn versus custard. What are you saying? That there's someone else going around poisoning food trucks? Might could be. Why? It'd be a god's tit if I know. Ask the police. They're supposed to be looking into all of this, not just taking it easy. Blaming the little guy. It is your food truck, though. I mean, no offense, but aren't you responsible for the food that comes out of it? Right? That don't mean I guarantee it ain't poison. I've been serving corn for two decades, and not one person has complained of even slight ass leakage. That's rare for a food truck. You ask me, someone big is behind this. Someone with a whatchamacallit, a veiled interest. Vested. What? A, a vested interest. Veiled? Vested? It's a cover-up either which way. I liked Bob, and I trusted what he and Hubert said about their innocence. So, I decided to go digging and see just how far up the corn tree this case went. There is no foundation for the claim that I, Howard J. Tasty, had anything to do with what happened to those gentlemen's food trucks. That accusation is just pure poppycock. This is Howard Tasty, known locally as Mr. Tasty. He runs the largest chain of restaurants in Oregon, Tasty's. Lately, his business hasn't been going so well, thanks to the emergence of a new trend of people turning to mobile vendors for their food fix. Those boys only have themselves to blame, and the people that ate at their trucks Well, don't get me wrong, I know America is based on freedoms, and choice is very important to capitalism, of course, but really, I've been saying those things are unsanitary for years. Nobody listened to me. They should have come and eaten their dinners at one of my restaurants instead. I have five-star ratings of food across the board. I didn't want to mention that Howard Tasty has been accused of paying off local judges to threaten other businesses with prosecution for minor infractions but he brought it up of his own accord, so I didn't have to. This great borrowed country of mine is founded on the great value that business comes first and people come second. And anybody who accuses me of having a judge in my pocket, or refusing the elderly workers their pensions, or failing to cover medical expenses for faulty grills that cause injury, should remember that their country was built on the backs of slaves. Slaves! Everybody's so much better off now. I mean, you really have nothing to complain about. So what somebody gets a little burnt, or goes to the grave dead broke? You can't take it with you. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me. As long as people are eating at my restaurants, it's all tasty. 
It was pretty clear to me that this man was capable of poisoning scores of people. But no one had anything on Tasty, and his lawyers stopped the interview after he said the word slaves. While James was tied up with big business, I decided to stay local and pay a visit to Hubert's wife and son to get their take on the events unfolding. My dad's butt muncher. Billy! Oh, I am so sorry. He's normally so well behaved. No, I'm not. How do you feel now that Bob Cobb has had the same thing happen over at his food truck? Oh, there is no love between me and Bob. That's not what you said before Dad smacked you with the pizza tray. Shut up or I'll smack you with the pizza tray, you little fucker. Uh, sorry, right, yeah, Bob, uh... Yeah, it does make me question whether Hubert is innocent, but he's still not getting his hands on my son. He makes better food than you do. You want to go live with your father? He might have poisoned 80 people. No? Then shut your little mouth, you sack of shit, before I... Oh, sorry, yeah, uh, well, we'll have to see, I guess. Even if he's innocent, I'm leaving him. Things in the town were escalating. People were afraid to eat out and mobile food vendors were going under faster than an Olympic high diver. It was now, while the city was at fever pitch, the new football stadium downtown, that the judge presiding over both Hubert and Bob's cases decided to stage a Visit a Perk Day, in which the press were invited to witness them meeting the victims of their supposed attack. The obvious aim was for the men to be guilted into a confession, and the event was broadcast directly on a live feed for the stadium's halftime show. Wheeled in first, amongst the flashes of cameras, was Dorothy Farmer. She ate the first cob from Bob's van, surviving only due to her strong constitution. Now, paraplegic from the lower lip down, she asked the man what was presumably a piercing question, but came out as, Hubber, Hubber. Bob and Hubert couldn't resist the waterworks for long, as Jacob, aged just nine, waddled in next. His legs just shriveled memories of their former selves. When he grew up, he was going to play baseball. What broke the men, though, was Shaniqua Barton, a young lady who once had a whole head, but now only half of it remained. She wept from her eye and couldn't speak, but somehow, with that remaining half a face, asked the men, why? Shinikwa was going to be a model. Now, with only half the number of angles to be shot from, there's no chance of that ever happening. The pornographic pity that the victims evoked, in the accused and in the stadium audience, had the desired effect. Even if Hubert and Bob weren't guilty, they had already been tried by the minds of their peers. Tried by those in the stadium, or watching on the TV at home. Tried by a room of broken, mangled half-corpses. Simple American citizens who just wanted cream pies and corn, but ended up with twisted, wonky bodies that no longer functioned. So who did poison all these people? Sal Biggin, a local PI hired by Bob Cobb himself, has one theory. Hey, look, uh, Bob hired me when he knew the police weren't going to dig any further into this, and, uh, you know, he wanted to know who was really behind it. But look, I, I really should be saying this, but between you and me, it didn't take much inquiring to see that it's obviously Mr. Tasty is behind all of this. I mean, Mr. Tasty, you know, the big food guy. I mean, seriously, he's losing business through the mouth to the mobile food van, so he poisons the food, okay, and he kills people, okay, and now he has all of their customers. It doesn't get much more clear-cut than that, does it? Really? I mean, like, look, look, this was the easiest open and shut case in my entire career. It took about four hours for me to work it out. That's from the first phone call to the time where I phoned him back to say, look, I've worked it out. It's probably Mr. Tasty. That's the whole thing. I mean, really, it, it's a clear-cut picture. I just wish, you know, I had more time to work on it. Yes, but can you prove any of it? Yeah, there's, there's tons of evidence. I've, I've, got, I've got a folder full 
chock a block of, ev of, of evidence. It's it's not just some pie in the theory. It all works out, all of it. It's, it's clear cut. A to B, you C to D, D to E, to F to G, right to Z, and back again. So what's the next step? Work with Bob and Hubert's lawyer to exonerate them? Ah, well, you see, Bob, uh, Bob hasn't paid me in a couple of days, so... He's in prison. Hey, that ain't my problem. I'm a professional. I need to get paid. No money? Sorry, can't help you. Plus, you know, I really shouldn't be talking about this, but between you and me, I got this other thing on. Famous guy thinks his wife is banging his grandfather. It's gross, but he pays good. Anyway, good luck with your radio show. Sal's theory made a lot of sense, and he said he gave all the evidence to Jill, the lawyer, but... There was one major reason why Howard Tasty couldn't have poisoned all those people. And it's the reason the case against him falls apart. Howard Tasty is a devout Christian. So what really happened to all those people in Oregon? Bob and Hubert both got the death penalty leaving Hubert with a very slim chance of gaining custody of his son. Jill Person, Hubert's lawyer, was found strangled in her hotel room yesterday. She'd apparently killed herself after burning a suitcase full of defense evidence. As of yet, no one quite knows why she would do this. And finally, Mr. Tasty continues to dominate the Oregon food trade. When we asked him how he felt about how things had worked out, his two-word reply was as nonsensical as it was simple. He said, Remember slavery. I've been James Pooley. And I've been Todd Barnett. And you've been listening to Never Solve. We hope you've enjoyed not finding out who poisoned nearly 80 people in Oregon as much as we have. Tune in next time to not find out who's killing fishermen and dumping them on private yachts. See you next time on Never Solved. Never Solved.